Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Grace and peace to you today. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be with me on our Pastor Gemma. And uh, we are going to deal with uh, a question that all of us must answer at some point. How do you view the Bible? And even if you do not have a stated opinion, the truth is by your behavior, by my behavior, um, I have an opinion. Uh, before we go there, let me start by giving God thanks for life, for being good to us, good to me as an individual and to us as a family. I really give God praise for family members. And uh, we have three adult children, two sons and a daughter. The sons are married, so... The first son is Donnell, married to Angel. Then we have Dion, married to Leah. And they have two sons, Darian and Daniel. And we have Jade Patrice, our daughter. And this week, Jade is celebrating a birthday. And we give God praise for his keeping power in her life and what he's made out of her. Amazing young woman, amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> A young woman way beyond my wildest dreams and expectations. And for that, I'm so grateful to God. I thank God for Divine Destiny and the Covenanters, who I have to say have held up our hands, have been prayerfully supporting us, have been really gracious to us, and um, making pastoring easier than it could have been. And I really give God praise for them. Thank you for every viewer and your words for, of encouragement that um, comes to us from time to time. In the event that you are a first-time viewer, my name is Gemma Duncan. I'm married to Apostle Vivian Duncan. And together we pastor Divine Destiny Worship Center. Our headquarters is in Digo Martin, on the Digo Martin Main Road, opposite Sardonyx Drive in Trinidad. And we have branches in Sangre Grande in Faisabad. In Shogunas, we have a branch in New York, Claro, one in Tobago and one in Antigua. Our Sunday service is in-house in the sanctuary and we meet at 9 a.m. every Sunday and uh, we have two online services, Thursdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. And we actually have um, a service on Tuesdays, deliverance service from 6 p.m. And on Wednesdays at 11 a.m., we have a midday service. Uh, upcoming events, special events, are the, on Friday, the, um, tomorrow, Friday, uh, we have a special speaker online or Son Dion, mighty man of God, listen, powerful in deliverance ministry and the power gifts. God is so gracious to us. I often tell Vivian jokingly, like God divided him in two. One son, the elder one, is a prolific teacher of the word of God. And uh, the second one, who you will meet tomorrow, please God, is uh, um, 
a miracle worker, power gift, and we thank God for his goodness. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Donald. And I'm Pastor Angel. And we want to invite you to the 2021 edition of Crack Door Conference. We want you to be a part of it. It's going to be online, streamed live. And we so want you to come. It's going to be great. It's going to be so exciting. And you're going to grasp a lot of new information and just the word of what God has to say to us for this coming year. So be there. All right, praise God. The theme this year is going to be the mystery of time based on my new book the mystery of time so definitely check us out you're going to get the link all the information is going to be provided to you but see you at the crack door conference 2021 to god be the glory amen god bless you This is Pastor Donald Duncan of The Body Church, and I'm excited to share with you my brand new book, The Mystery of Time, Understanding the Time and Season You Are In. God has fit time into the continuum of eternity in such a way that it governs the human experience. In this, my seventh book, I look from seven different perspectives at the age-old question, what is time? I provide scriptural best practices for discerning God's timing and share effective tools for understanding the end times. Most importantly, I reveal through the life of Jesus the value of living according to God's schedule and tapping into the wisdom of the Holy Spirit for a revelation of the future. Pick up your copy today. You won't regret it. Available now at Amazon.com. Join me on Axe Pastor Gemma Radio, Isaac 98.1, every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. And join our daughter, so you get into me the entire family, Jade Patrice for her ministry offering, the pkconnection.com, where she caters primarily to pastors' children. We go back to the question, how do you view the Bible? And there are many opinions that are expressed in terms of how we view the Bible. Is it merely a good book? Is it a religious document for historical purposes? Is it a collection of outdated writings? Is it irrelevant for today's lifestyle? On the other hand, you have people who believe that it's God's word. It's a handbook for living. It's the revealed mind of God. Some people believe it's the revelation of God to man and the written will of God. Uh, one of Vivian's favorite quotes is the Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth. He borrowed the quote, but um, it's important for us to understand based on your perspective on the Bible, it's basic instructions before leaving earth. What I like about the scripture, what I like about the Bible is that it answers the questions for itself. And so today we are going to begin another little series in answering and responding to how do you view the Bible. And as I said when I started, all of us have a point of view, whether you think so or not. You have a point of view. And uh, how do I know what your point of view is? Your behavior, your philosophy of life. When you open your mouth, what you say will determine what's your point of view. And if you don't open your mouth, how you behave, how you live your lifestyle will be a dead giveaway, an indicator of uh, what you believe. We want to start by looking at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. And it reads, this is the King James Version, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly or thoroughly furnished unto all good work. 
How do you view the Bible? And remember, we are using the Bible to answer, to speak for itself. And uh, what more powerful place than for the Bible to speak for itself. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, as I just read, it claims emphatically that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Because it starts by saying all scripture, everything, is given by inspiration of God. And Vivian likes to say, if we look at the root of the word inspiration or inspired, we'll see a little word, little root word there, spire, S-P-I-R-E. And that's where we get like respiratory system. It talks about where we inhale and exhale air and so on. And uh, any word that you see spire is part of, uh, you know, it has something to do with breathing and breath. God himself breathed into the, very, the writers of the Bible. That's what the Bible is saying. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathes into these writers. His thoughts, his mind, his words, and they write it. So the truth is, their role primarily, the authors of the Bible were like scribes. Uh, the practice in the old days, even when Paul was writing, he had a scribe at times. And uh, somewhere in the book that he's writing, he would say that this person wrote this. And you never see the name of the book or being named of the author being um, called the scribe or the name of the scribe. The author is usually the person who says what must be written. And so the truth is God, based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, God is claiming to be the author of the Bible. And the 40 or so, they say men who wrote the scriptures were merely scribes. All scripture is given by inspiration. God breathed into them. And uh, that same word, the Bible used when God created Adam, he made him from the dust, a man, just the flesh, dust, a form lying there. And the Bible says, God breathed into him. Same concept of inspiration and the very nature of God came into Adam because God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. As God breathed into that lifeless form, the very image and likeness of God went into Adam and all of us have inherited that nature. So what is your view of the Bible? You may have varying views, as I said, but the Bible speaking for itself, and thank God the Bible is powerful in terms of how it speaks on its own behalf, says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And so the Bible says of itself that it is the inspired word of God. And then it goes on to tell us, and is profitable for doctrine. So where do I get the source of my doctrine? Where uh, should my doctrinal beliefs come from? Where should my, if you want to call it, religious beliefs uh, come from? The Bible says, and it is profitable for doctrine. If I want to know how well founded my doctrinal beliefs are, I go to the Bible, uh, look, take the beliefs, because it must be documented some way, I, I would think. And if it is not documented, you can't find it documented, then as you listen, take notes. And then you go to your Bible and see how closely aligned your belief system is to the Word of God, because it says of itself it is profitable for doctrine. And some people defend doctrine that is not here, that cannot be substantiated in the Bible. Now, why would you do that? If you believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God and I am embracing certain doctrinal teachings, then I need to see it here um, for me to say, well, yes, I can embrace that. I want to say here that there are some practices in any given organization or a church or uh, you know, a group of people, uh, we call it a community in Divine Destiny Worship Center. We can call ourselves a community. And we are just one part of this huge body of Christ. We're just a little part, a small part of this great uh, community that spans the entire universe. Everywhere you have human beings, 
who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who have embraced the word of God as the inspired word of God, they we all belong to this great community of different geographical locations, languages, cultures, color. I mean, you name it. We are just a small part of this community. And so it must be based on my uh, doctrine, my belief system must be based on the word of God. But I was saying that sometimes there are some cultural practices that may be in any given assembly that are not really doctrinal, right? They're just practices that the organization uses to help run the organization. For example, it may be a simple thing like um, clothing, right? In our case, um, we might say we prefer that women who go, have to go up on the pulpit that you're dressing a particular way. And it is not based on doctrine per se. But many times uh, it's because people don't dress suitably. And what happens is if you dressed in a way that um, you know, you're a prison worship leader, you take away from uh, uh, the person focusing on God and all they're seeing is how you are dressed, then we consider it not appropriate. Because when you go up there, the idea is not to vaunt yourself, um, but to you know, lead people in worship to God. So all eyes and all gaze must be on God. I remember um, a particular uh, a little video that I saw, and uh, the preacher was very attractive woman, very, very physically attractive, very well endowed, and uh, was an excellent speaker as far as I'm concerned, because I listened to what was being said. But there was some quite a bit of cleavage showing. And one gentleman commented, he said, ma'am, I'm not hearing anything you're saying. All I've seen is the cleavage. No, um, I, I, I don't know, you know, if it's about right and wrong and all of that. I'm not going there today. But the point I'm saying is that, unfortunately, for that really very good preacher, um, because she showed uh, too much cleavage, it took away from her presentation. And... Uh, uh, it's important for us to understand that what we have to say, if we represent God, is more important than how we look. It should look good. It should look decent. Um, not saying it shouldn't look attractive. And perhaps um, that whatever was being worn was maybe when you go out on a date with your husband might be suitable or so. But when we come out here, you want people to go away um, listening to the words you say. And so we try to avoid, well, I'll tell you, me, I try to avoid wearing anything that will kind of deflect from what I have to say, because what I have to say, to my mind, is of paramount importance. So such, if you, you're talking about a ruling for clothing, because that's some of the things we say when you go up on the pulpit there for praise and worship, or whatever, whatever you're going to do, the women in the church, avoid the cleavage, avoid the slits, you know, I mean, you know, try to just um, take a little middle road there. Uh, it's not doctrine per se, right? is church culture. So we have to be careful sometimes when we uh, actually would use the church culture as part of doctrine, or the doctrine comes from here, right? And there are other things that we could bring in place because we want to run things in a particular way. I just thought I would say that to make sure we clarify. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Now remember, we respond to how do you view the Bible? And uh, I said that the Bible is speaking for itself. It doesn't matter what view you have. Here is the scripture in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 to 17, speaking. And it says, the Bible says of itself, it is the inspired word of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. If I want to profit from the Bible, and all of us know about profit um, and loss. Uh, if I am into business, I want to make a profit. I don't want a loss. And God is saying, if you're thinking about doctrine or all these things we're going to be talking about, and you will end up with a profit in the end, the profit margin uh, will have something to show, then uh, the Bible must be the base for doctrine. It says for reproof. Reproof talks about rebuff. It's a little stronger than correction because if reproof and correction meant the same thing, the Bible would not say for reproof, for correction. So it means that there's a, a little nuance between corrections and reproof. Reproof is stronger. Reproof means when you've done wrong, when you've gone 
a, a little too much to the left, too much to the right, or very much to the left and right, or whatever, do wrong or contravene the, the word of God, and you, you, you are reined in, but you're reined in in a very strong sense. You know, some parents will reprove a child, and I mean, it's serious reproof. In my day, reproof could also include some blows, some licks. Nowadays, well, we are a little more liberal and so on, right? That reproof will go as far as that. That's how serious. Now, you don't always have to hit a child, but reproof, well, you'll be using strong words. Now, correction is a slightly different thing because the Bible says for reproof and correction. Correction means you've done it's wrong, and we're just telling you this is wrong, and I'm showing you this is the right way to do it. For example, as a school teacher, um, every evening we had some we had spelling. I taught standard four and five in back in the days, and that is when you used to call it common entrance. And uh, um, the every word that you got wrong in the spelling, you had to write corrections, and underneath every word you write it three times. So if the word was reproof, you write R E P R O F F R E P R O F F R E P R O F F in the same line. No, uh, it was not meant to punish the child, and some children took it as punishment, and they had a hard time, they didn't want to do it, and so on. But, but what was the intent was that you will get it right the next time, right? And even reproof, that's the ultimate intent. The, the intent of reproof is the same thing as correction, that you, you did something wrong, when you are reproved, you will align yourself up, change your behavior, and that shouldn't happen again another time. It says it's for instruction in righteousness. Righteousness means right living. So it's there to tell me how to live right, how to do right. From the time you hear the word of righteousness, it simply means how to do right. Now, we're living in an era where really there is no right and wrong. And the popular saying is, if it feels good, do it, however you feel. So today I could get up and I feel to be this, and I am that. And tomorrow... Um, based on my personal feelings, I could feel to be some, something else or I, could, I will feel to revert to what I used to be and then I am that. But the Bible says uh, it is profitable for instruction in righteousness and we're going to have to go back to the place where there is a line that divides right from wrong. Nothing seems right. As a matter of fact, in this day, today as you're listening to me or viewing me, Right is wrong, wrong is right. Nobody knows what is right. And that's why we don't understand. We talk about what, what happened to our nation. Wh why? What's happening? I mean, all right, I'm talking from Trinidad and Tobago, so we're talking Trinidad initially first. And everybody else in every nation will say, well, what's happening to our nation? Well, we have decided that there's nothing right or wrong. Everything is by feeling. You have the right to feel, however. No? However you feel is right. And then we're wondering why our young men have no conscience. They have no feeling of right and wrong. They could just kill you and walk away with no remorse because what is right, what is wrong? In my day, perhaps most of you, almost 90 something percent of you, 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 you were taught by your parents, this is right and this is wrong. There's always a right way to do something and there's a wrong way. And, but amazingly, we are very liberal in our thinking, but when the person goes afoul of the law, you want to jail them, you want to find them, and so on. Well, if we try to portray the fact that everybody's free to do what you want, then why, why we have these jails are being filled out? So there must be a line of right and wrong. As we end, the scripture is God breathed, is exhaled from God. We said God is the author and he used the human instrumentalities. And what I like with God, God used the personalities the background, the educational uh, uh, acumen, for want of a better word, and experiences of each speaker. If you read the Bible, and Apostle Paul, prolific writer, his language skills are amazing. Because he was a lawyer, he has this ability to argue cases. And uh, most people who study law would want to study the Pauline epistles, Paul's writing. And then you have certain speakers who just, who just talk, like James, Jesus is brother very ordinary person very blunt in terms of a language god did not take away uh, their personalities or their background and the experiences what does the bible say for itself in response to this question as we, we pause for today until next time you have to be with me next um thursday how do you view the bible 
the Bible says of itself that it is the inspired word of God. You have to decide what do you see? And that's a question that all of us must answer for ourselves. And remember what I told you? Even if you don't voice an opinion, how you believe and what you believe, you live it. Yeah. And my husband always says, what you do is a greater indication of what you believe than what you see. Because we could spout all kinds of things. I could say I believe this and that. But what do I do when I'm done talking? That's the greatest indicator or indication of what I really believe. I really hope I helped you to fine tune your belief system. And these are words of cons for you to consider. And I hope if you didn't have the correct view of the scripture, of the Bible, then maybe you might adjust it a little bit. So perhaps in your own time, take the time to read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 and ponder on it. And the next time we meet, we will again allow the Bible to express itself on what our co correct view of it should be. I don't want you to ever forget what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no man comes to the father except by me. God bless you real good.